Hello and welcome to Inside the Women of Denver, where we talk to local leaders about their successes, failures, and lessons learned on the journey to success. Today, we're talking to Macy Matarazzo, the first love coach I've ever met and by far the coolest. She became a bride at 43 years old, and now she has dedicated her life to helping other women stop all the crazy dating madness and get right to finding the perfect partner to have a blissful relationship. I've experienced one of Macy's workshops and she had us all spilling our guts in minutes. I can't wait for you to get to know this amazing lady. Macy, I'm so glad and honored to have you today. Thank you, Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's my favorite story, so of course I want to talk to you about your man. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, 43 years old, what yes. was it like going through 43 years of life and not having that man in your life? Well, I mean, it wasn't like I didn't have any relationships. Mm -hmm. I definitely experienced relationships, but it was, it was the sense that I was meeting people who didn't necessarily get me. So okay. I felt like I was hiding a lot, like I couldn't really truly be myself. And once I figured that out, I was able to attract people who I felt like did understand me. And, who I could feel that mutual respect and feel like I could be what I call 100% concentrated me. Uh-huh. So now that we know the before how you felt about things, okay, what was it like when you were able to make that transition to finding people that felt good around you, that had the right energy, and you finally started getting closer to finding the man that you're with now? What's his name? Larry. Larry. You got closer to finding Larry. What was that like, the transition to feeling like you're on to the right, you're on the right track? You know, it wasn't without some effort. Like, I really realized, really, when I was approaching 40, like, that was really a pivotal time because I realized, wow, I'm almost 40. I'm still not in that kind of relationship that I had imagined for a really long time. And so it was a sense of, I am really ready to do what it takes. Mm -hmm. And so I basically said, I'm gonna do whatever it takes. And I got support and I did a lot of things that were different in order to kind of shift my frequency to create that kind of relationship that was really deep in my heart. Yeah, okay. So now I want to know, so I'm taking you through the whole process, and I want to talk to you about how it felt when you found him, and then I want to know your process. What, what does it take for somebody to get to the place that you're in right now? So tell me about your man. Tell me what is Larry like, and what was it like to find him for the first time? You know, everybody's story is different, so I don't want this to say, okay, this is how it's going to have to happen for you if you're single, but my experience was that when I met Larry, and I met him online, so the first thing I saw was his picture and read what he wrote to me, I knew I had a five-star candidate. And so I really felt like it was um, an instant kind of knowingness that I met this person that matched what I had been kind of tuning into. Yeah. and. It was a really amazing experience, and I really, really feel like um, I consciously created it. Yeah, so I can really relate to that feeling. When I, so I met my husband in college, his name is Benny, <laughs> mm -hmm. and I remember at that time I had all these these lists of things, and I know that I, I follow your email list, so. I'm in touch with a lot of the things that you talk about, and one of the things you, things you say is to have a list, have an understanding of what you're looking for, and a lot of people don't do that. And I recall, you know, meeting this man and looking at my little list, you know, it was an invisible list inside my head, and just saying, okay, check, okay, he's, check, huh. I didn't even know this guy was the one until I went and checked off that list. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I think it's an interesting thing because there's a couple ways you can look at that because mm -hmm. there is, there's a list, but then there's also like this 
description of what life in love would be like. And to me, that's kind of what I like to share with women because ultimately you want to really know yourself enough to know what is important to you and how you want to experience life in partnership. Mm -hmm. And that's like a, that's a feeling, that's, an, yeah. that's a, a knowingness about who you really are and being willing to be in the world in a way that you can say, yeah, that works for me, rather than, oh, does he like me? Does he like me? Yeah. That kind of experience. So there's, there's a little shift there. And I think that's really beautiful that you were able to kind of sense and, and check back and see that, you know, what you knew was important to you, yeah. you were getting in that relationship. Yeah, and it wasn't just things like, you know, curly hair or he must be tall. It was things yeah. like he must make me feel challenged, must make me feel, um, what was it? I, I said I wanted to feel like that person can see me. Yeah. And I felt like he, he did that. I wanted to feel like someone saw me. I, I think I said at the time, me for me. Mm -hmm. And I remember a lot of people, a lot of the guys that I had dated in the past, they were looking to me because I look like a wife or I look like a certain perception and not because they actually knew and understood who I was. Mm -hmm. Which is such a beautiful thing that you say that because that means that you were there for you. Mm -hmm. So you were on your own team, essentially. I see a lot of women who struggle because they're really not available to themselves. Like they're not committing to themselves. They're not doing these things for themselves and in order to create the kind of love that I'm talking about, which is an elevated experience, and that's why I called my company Big Happy Love because I think it's a bigger thing. It's big, I love it. That, that you have to be willing to do all that for yourself. So how do people do that? I feel like as a, um, as anybody, man or woman. If you're a guy watching the show, these are the same tips that you would be able to use to find your perfect mate. But how does one get to the point where they can even see inside themselves to know what they need in their lives? What transformations do they have to, um, do they have, to have in order to get to that place? That's a really good question. I think it's, it's different for a lot of people. I mean, one, there's this, you know, knowing yourself, but what I also see is that, you know, over time, when we collect failed relationships, and I don't mean that to be negative, but truly we have these experiences in our life, and those experiences um, can be really deep into ourselves. And if they're negative experiences, it can influence how we are navigating our relationship space. Mm -hmm. And therefore, then it's like we have some blocks. Like um, I see a lot of people overcompensating for things. Like if they had a bad experience with someone, and this is a general example, but like if they had a bad experience with dating a musician or something, and then they're like, I'll never date musicians again. And then they go <laughs> a totally different direction when perhaps their truth, like what is true for them is somewhere in between. So there are a lot of blind spots and blocks that can come into play. So we can't always see what's holding us back. Mm -hmm. So it's helpful to have someone who can reflect that back to you. Yeah. And that's why this work is, is valuable because I help people see where they they can be stuck and when we can clear those blocks then they can be able to really they're projecting more of their true selves yeah so tell me about a story of one of it doesn't have to be a client that you have worked with but tell me a story of a woman who had um, some difficulties and how did she personally transform how did she get from point A, I'm lonely, I really want to find someone to be with me, and to I'm getting married, and this person is the right person in my, to have in my life? Mm -hmm. Well, I have um, one 
particular woman I'm thinking about, and actually a couple different women. This, this, this pattern matches a lot of people, actually. Mm -hmm. And the pattern is, you know, when you are getting that kind of pull in your heart when you're like saying, you know what, I really want meaningful love in my life. Like, I really want that. And, you know, and you can get really clear on that. The, the thing that I see that is the most powerful is when you can say yes to yourself and say, yes, this is important to me and I am willing to do what it takes for myself. So it's like a commitment to yourself. Mm -hmm. And like I said earlier, you know, it's this being available for yourself, like being willing to, um, support yourself and listen to that cry for, you know, I want to create this relationship in my life. And when you can say yes to yourself, a lot can happen. Mm -hmm. And this one particular woman, I mean, she, we first met and she was really kind of negative about relationships. I mean, okay. she had a really bad marriage that she was still healing from you know, kids involved, a lot of pain, and some experiences around dating that weren't exciting, let's say, to <laughs> say the least. <laughs> and so when she was able to say, yes, I want this, and I'm willing to do something different, because if we continue to do the same things, we're gonna get the same results, when she was willing to experiment with that okay and willing to be wrong about a few things then her whole world opened up and you know within a couple months she met an amazing guy and she's totally in love wow. so i think it's just amazing the power we have in just being able to listen to ourselves and uh -huh. trusting that and yeah and taking care of ourselves in that way so how'd she get to the point of that willingness honestly mentorship i mean i was able to support her and hold her in that space to allow her to see that you know one of the reasons why often we're not getting what we desire in our life is because we're not valuing ourselves and we're not seeing how we actually have um some we can participate in this. We can take personal responsibility uh -huh. and do something about it. It's not that the external world is just, a, a, you know, abusing us. It's not like that. It's actually, that's just a little indication that there's something ready to be healed. And when we're willing to bring that kindness into ourselves, then the world starts looking more kind. And then we can receive that kindness. And then people and love and opportunities and all sorts of things happen. I mean, this isn't just about love. Uh huh. This is everything in our life. It's about all, I mean, love is, love incorporates everything. It's not yeah. just about finding a spouse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's the foundation of all things. So that's the other thing I see with women is when they start working on this, and they start working on what's keeping them from meaningful love. Uh -huh. They get new jobs. They get raises. Wow, it all they, just you comes know, full magical circle. things happen. Beautiful. Yeah. All right, now tell me personally, what's something that you want to accomplish in your near future? What do you want for the future of your business, the future of your life? What is something that you're looking forward to? Hmm. I really am excited about being able to work with more women in different ways. Like right now I work a lot privately and I love teaching and speaking and that, that just to me is a passion because I come from you know, artistic, an artistic and theatrical background but also in you know, teaching and change management and coaching. So I love like the idea of combining that together, doing mm -hmm. more creative stuff and helping women connect to their bodies because, you know, the stuff that's old that keeps us from getting what we want is in our body. 
And I remember you also are a yoga instructor as yes. well, right? Yeah, and yoga is a very important part of this work. Mm -hmm. I heard this quote the other day that I love, and it was said, knowledge is only rumor until it's in your muscle. Knowledge is only rumor, rumor until, until it's, it's in, your, in muscle. your muscle. So it's true. Like, you know, we can read books all day long. I mean, self help books, are, there's a self help book for any possible thing, and probably a million for each possible to topic. But until we can take that knowledge and learn how to integrate it and and commit to a consistent practice application then yeah. yeah applying it that's when it starts getting into our cells and that's why I think it's really helpful to be able to learn how to receive support because when we receive support then we have that person who can can guide you along the way to rewire yourself so you're creating a new frequency because your future partner, your future job, everything that you want is in a different frequency. Mm -hmm. So how do we make that? So basically in, in simple terms, like what I, I'm, I'm so simplistic. <laughs> so in simple crystal terms, that means when you get in the groove, everything starts working out. <laughs> yeah, but you need to get in a new groove if you want a new thing. Yes. Get so in a it's new like, groove. how do you get in the, that new groove yes. and stay in it and, and, you know, reinforce it so it becomes a groove, uh -huh. right? So then new things can show up. Love it. So I want to know, what is one thing? So we have people watching. They're in all different places in their lives right now. Mm -hmm. What's one thing that you want to make sure they know about life, about love, about their own futures? Okay. What I think is the most important teaching for this moment is the moment you value yourself, the world values you. It's as simple as that. I love that. That is an amazing message. I hope you all heard it. When you value yourself, the world values you. Thank you so much for spending time with me, Crystal Covington, and the beautiful Macy Matarazzo. I can't wait to see you again next time. I want you to know that no matter what, you deserve to be seen, heard, and known. Thanks for watching Inside the Women of Denver. I'll see you next time.